In a quiet neighborhood near Bristol, Tennessee's Anderson Elementary School, just down the street from a baseball field and a community playground, construction crews and volunteers from Holston Habitat for Humanity are hard at work building a house that will soon become home for Megan Mangrum and her two young sons. It will take about 12 weeks from start to finish to build this Glen Street house, which will become Holston Habitat's 320th new house and the 29th Habitat house built in the Bristol area since the organization was founded in 1985. So in 2019, um, I went through a divorce and quickly learned about the challenges of finding affordable housing, but also decent housing. Um, there wasn't much available, so it was quite a challenge, which I realize is not unique to me. I know many people experience that, but I was lucky enough to find something that we could fit in, a two-bedroom apartment. So um, I remembered I had learned about Habitat for Humanity before, and I went ahead and put in an application, just hoping I might meet the criteria, and I was selected in 2021. Megan's commitment to hard work, her role as a mother, her full-time job with the Bristol Virginia school system, and her part-time pursuit of a bachelor's degree from ETSU made her the perfect candidate for a Habitat home. So to qualify for the Habitat program, there are kind of three legs in the stool. The first is a demonstration of need. And to us, what that means is maybe a family is spending more than 30% of their household income on their housing. So we would consider that to be cost burdened. They're spending too much on where they live. Many families right now are spending upwards of 50% of their household income on housing because it is so difficult to find affordable housing in the Tri-Cities. So spending too much, perhaps where they're living, they're overcrowding because they've got a growing family, not enough bedrooms. Sometimes we see um, different gendered of teenagers, children living in the same bedroom. We like for them to have separate spaces. Um, perhaps there are some structural or mechanical issues. So the home is dilapidated. So there's a whole group of reasons why a family might qualify with a demonstration of need. So that's the first pillar. The second is that they've got to have some kind of income. So they have to have an ability to pay. What Habitat does is we provide a 0% interest mortgage. So 0%. That doesn't mean the house is free, so they still have to pay a monthly payment every month that would cover their um, homeowner's insurance through escrow and then you know their monthly principal. So even though it's a 0% interest mortgage, we're, the families that we're serving are making between 30 and 65% of the average median income in the area. So we're working with lower and moderate income families. And when we look around and we say, who are these families making 30 to 65% of that average median income? These are our bus drivers. These are our city and county school employees. These are our retail managers. These are restaurant employees. These are the people who are really keeping our economy alive. So that's the second leg. We've got the ability to pay. And then the last one is the willingness to partner. And this is so important to Habitat's mission and vision because we really believe in handing over the keys, but we wanna make sure that we do it right. Most of the families that we're partnering with have never owned a home before. And maybe their entire lineage, nobody's ever owned a home. And so there's, there's a lot to know about owning a house. And so we wanna make sure that when they close and when they sign on the dotted line, that they feel like they understand what are the bills I'm going to have to pay? And what do I take care of now versus what's going to be happening five and 10 years down the road? And so they go through eight to 10 weeks of homeownership education. And so that's a really deep dive into financial literacy, budgeting, thinking about your will, thinking about what are the different types of insurance that you need, looking at the big picture of Habitat for Humanity. How do we run the organization? So there's all kinds of things that they're looking at and learning. And then additionally, our families are contributing sweat equity. And to us, that means volunteer hours. So that's, that's their kind of skin in the game um, in Habitat. So before we even break ground, families are volunteering 175 hours. And they have a minimum of 250 hours that they have to complete before they can get the keys to the house. While contributing her own sweat equity, Megan has had help from her co-workers and community volunteers, plus Bristol Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, State Street United Methodist Church, Federal Home Loan Bank of Cincinnati, the Tennessee Housing Development Agency, and the Virginia-based nonprofit organization Give Solar. 
So this is Holston Habitat's first ever home with solar panels. And so the orientation on the lot had to be in such a way to make sure that there was enough south facing square footage that we can get solar panels on it. And the way that this came about was through a grant opportunity and partnering with this company called Give Solar. So they primarily work with the state of Virginia Habitat affiliates, and they made an exception for this project because it was a compelling story and it was a, a good location. And so we'll have solar panels on Megan's roof and Give Solar and the Virginia Habitat office, they predict that she'll save about $25,000 over the term of her 30 year mortgage. So that's just one extra way that we can make sure that this home is really affordable for Megan and her sons. In addition to building homes, Holston Habitat operates retail outlets called Restores and oversee major rehabilitation of homes in need of repair. All proceeds, mortgage payments, outlet sales, and donations are rolled back into the organization for future projects. We build new homes and we provide critical home repair to low-income families in the Tri-Cities. So we're the builder. We're retail, so we've got our two restores, one in Johnson City, one in Kingsport, and all of those proceeds go to supporting the construction that we're doing throughout the year. But then we're also the bank. So we're servicing all of the mortgages and all of the loans for the new homes that we're building. And I share that because I think it's such a special way that Megan, she'll always be tied to Habitat and supporting the mission of Habitat. So when Megan sends in her monthly payment, when she closes on her home in just the next couple of months, that principal amount, let's say it's 500 bucks a month that goes towards her principal, in perpetuity until she is done paying off her mortgage, that will help build future Habitat houses. What a beautiful thing that you work really hard, that you partner with Habitat, that you put in your own sweat equity, you save for your closing costs, and then forever, until you pay off your home, you're supporting the next wave of Habitat families. I just think that's really a, a beautiful part of the story and just demonstrates how you can continue giving back even once you've moved into your home. In the meantime, Megan has taken an active role in choosing colors and finishes for her new house, checking home ownership off her list of things to do and preparing her sons for a new home with room to grow and plenty to do. Um, well, so Spencer, he just turned 13. And he's really excited just to have friends over and honestly a space away from his brother. <laughs> They've been sharing a room, so he's very excited about that. And Lennon is just, he's so excited, mainly for all of the um, amenities near us. Like there's a basketball court up here, there's pickleball, a playground, and then at the end of the street, there's actually a baseball field as well. So he's mostly excited about having a yard and playing outside and getting to enjoy all these other activities. And to those who have invested in her home. Oh my gosh, a tremendous thank you to everyone in the program, especially the regulars. You know, I don't get to meet a lot of them, but they still come out here and work on my house and put in the time without, you know, knowing me or having a relationship with me. So that's really special. Um, thank you to all of the, the, the don donors, um, especially I think the estate that we got and um, the Hard Rock Casino, um, the church groups that help. But um, yeah, it means a lot to me that they come out here without knowing who I am. And we can't build new homes without community support because I tell you, nobody's building affordable housing because it's not affordable to build. So we are really committed to making this work and we are really thankful for anybody who feels led to contribute to Holston Habitat so that we can keep our momentum. The way that we get funding is I mentioned those mortgage payments. Those are supporting the construction costs. The restore proceeds, that helps us to keep construction moving. And then it's community sponsorships. So that's businesses, it's individuals. We also apply for grants, but about 20 to 40% of every new home is covered through local contributions and the restore proceeds. That's a big amount. So I would just encourage anybody, I mean, there's no gift too small or too large that can really make an impact for a local family like Megan. To learn more about Holston Habitat for Humanity and how you can get involved, please visit www.holstonhabitat.org.